yeah, 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 yeah. It's your boy Shaq Gaspar and JTG, aka Primetime, aka Team Sexy Ass. ass. Yeah. And yo, you watch the Wrestling Classic. So check out the Instagram. Check it out all, cause it's the shit right here. Chill, chill. And we're back for another casual conversation with the classic. And here with me today is none other than WWE veteran, current NWA star, and an independent scene, just kicking it on the independent scene today. <laughs> none other than Jason, aka JTG. How are you today? I'm doing great. I'm doing a lot better. I, was a little I know you're a little bit under the weather. But, I'm glad you're I'm feeling good. better. I'm getting, I'm getting. I had to feel better for this for this amazing interview. So <laughs> thanks, I, I thanks, thanks. just drinking a lot of liquid. <laughs> I don't know if you know this, but you have been like, I've been hearing JTG, JTG with everybody I talk to. So like, obviously I have the Wrestling Classic Instagram page, but I got like these other mini communities on like Clubhouse and Discord uh -huh. that I'm a part of. And there's people from Texas like, oh, I just saw JTG at a show and he's killing it over here. And then there's someone over there. I mean, like, I just saw JTG at a show. And I'm like, well, I've wanted to get JTG on the show. It's long overdue. We've crossed paths <laughs> so many times. I'm like, what better time than now that you're just like, you're just killing it out there right now. Yeah, and I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying the freedom. I'm enjoying the creativity. I'm enjoying the um, traveling and getting able to um, perfect my craft. You know, every time you step foot in front of an audience and and and, and is able to perform, you're, you're learning from experience and you just, I'm just learning, learning um, in general. How was it to get back to being able to travel to shows and stuff after being shut down so much during the pandemic? It definitely felt great, especially in front of an audience. I know there were some yeah. shows that were running um, in front of a empty studio or empty arena or empty whatever, but I didn't have that. Uh, I didn't. I wasn't. Uh, I didn't do that. Um, as soon as I was able to perform again, it was, it was in front of a small crowd, but at least it was in front of a crowd. Yeah. Well, how much? Like you, obviously, from your experience, like that makes a huge difference wrestling in front of a crowd and not having that crowd to work off of. Correct. Yeah, I, I believe. Re uh, wrestling even theater it, it all requires uh crowd participation listening yeah. to the crowd and responding listening to the crowd and reacting um so i definitely think the the audience plays a big part in um in live performance because I, I always looked at it that way too because i'm like in other sports like i'm like in hockey mm -hmm. or, or, or basketball like you're gonna be competitive regardless of the fact but with wrestling yeah. I feel like you feed off the audience like just, yeah, just it's, much it's, part more, of the show. it's more entertainment <laughs> yeah no it is and it is as we've seen crowds slowly come back and like oh this show doesn't seem that like not that i'm saying any show is bad but it seems yeah. like the atmosphere is more enhanced because there's an audience there making noise and it just adds exactly. to like even I guess how you would react off it. Are you still with the NWA? I know you appeared there and started showing up there, but they've been off and on quite a bit. But are, are you with the NWA still? As as far as I know, yeah. Unless you heard something. <laughs> <laughs> what made you What made you want to go with the NWA? No, I got the call from them, and um, yeah. and I like their product, and yeah, you know, I, I went in and everything sounded good, and I had my debut match with Fred Froster with Fred um Fred. Roster, with Fred yeah. Yeah, and we had a great match, and I like the the locker. I love the locker room. I love the the environment there. It's, it's a safe, non toxic environment. So yeah. um, I see a big future there. I love the vibe. I love the whole studio setting. Setting. Yeah. Being like a, a, a fan that goes back and watches the old school stuff all the time, like the old World Championship Wrestling on the Jim Crockett era. Like that whole studio setting is just cool. And I think for anyone that's a wrestling fan, like it must be cool to wrestle in that environment as well. I was exactly. I was able to um, brought it out my resume. I did. I've done arenas. I've yeah. done uh, football <laughs> stadiums. I've, I've now I've done studios. <laughs> um, you kind of talked about a little bit at the beginning about like being able to get creative and stuff. But how would you say you're enjoying this current run you're having in NWA on the independence compared to the WWE? Like, what are some of the biggest differences? The biggest difference is freedom. Like I said, like yeah. I said before, I am. I am truly an independent contractor. I could take work from a from anywhere and I have to worry about um, getting permission. Um, and that's the the true spirit of being an independent contractor. No, for sure. I, th and I feel like that's a very uh, common answer people would probably give. But <laughs> <laughs> other than yeah, that, that, another that question asking, I have for you is that, that, that you... for permission, it kind of, it doesn't sit well with the God, 
you know? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, and that's this is not like a, an insult to them, but like it's been said many times. Usually, when you're working there, WWE specifically, you're working for that audience of one. So, you know, sometimes you got a creative idea, it doesn't get passed along that far down the road, or it just it's just like if it's, he's not feeling it, he's not feeling it, then it's over, right? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. 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 Um, something I really want to ask you about because you've always been like obviously a big dude and jacked up, but you are like probably in the best shape of your life right now. And what, what got you on that journey? Oh, thank you. Well, during the pandemic, um, you know, I was very limited. I, I had to find some speakeasy gyms. Hold on yeah. one second. Let me charge my phone. I did not know my phone was going <laughs> to um, well, go, I'll get right back to that question. Hold on. I don't want my phone yeah. to die. Yeah, no back to your question. Yeah. Um, I just started changing my diet and hitting the gym a lot harder than I was hitting it before. Um, I started taking sea moss uh, every day and then also started adding like these other four natural ingredients that help boost testosterone. And that's yeah. how I came up with T-Moss, my late, uh, one of my latest uh, products. And that helped me um, increase my testosterone naturally because everybody kept, you know, I was putting on, putting on all this size. They probably kept asking me, are you, hey man, are you on steroids? What you taking, man? <laughs> yeah. you know, I'm like, no, I'm all natural. And they were like, come on, man, really? I'm like, I'm serious. I'm all natural. Um, this is what I'm taking. And, you know, a few guys tried it. They liked it. They felt the difference. And I was like, you know what? I need to bottle this up and sell it. Yeah. T Moss, T Moss.com. <laughs> how did you how did you discover it then? What, T Moss? Yeah. Well, C Moss is um something that, that um a lot of men take in the Caribbean. Um okay. that helps with a lot of uh male male stuff. Yeah. And um <laughs> and then um C Moss is just an amazing uh natural um uh item that you could get from the ocean you know it it, it, it gets rid of uh, detoxes you it gets rid of uh, excess mucus um it helps with inflammation and when you're a professional wrestler and a, and a bodybuilder that helps a lot with the inflammation because your muscles are always always sore yeah. and then and then i did some just re regular research on testosterone and what could help boost it naturally and i found those um four herbs i actually found another one so there's five right now in, in yeah um, so yeah, check it out. Give some more. You can find out some more information at T dash. You're, you're just out here trying to build monsters, is what's happening. <laughs> yes, yes. I want to be responsible <laughs> for all the for the for all the monsters that come through in wrestling. <laughs> well, we we've seen it in the past, though. We've seen it with Jinder. We've seen it with with Drew McIntyre, where you know they once upon a time got released. They go out there and they they rock the indies and they get jacked, and then they come back to the WWE. Do you have any interest coming back to the WWE if, if the door is open? If the door is open and everything makes sense. Um, financially and story storyline wise yeah i'm I'm, def I'm definitely open to the opportunity you know i just don't want to come back you know just to come back you know i want to come back um and me and and you know leave a mark yeah leave a mark from from me uh shad and crime time you know definitely gotta leave a mark I'm just not gonna come back just to come back just because of money yeah. no for sure i think that's a, that's a great answer too because you're, you're not coming back just for the sake of coming back but it needs to be creatively and financially beneficial to you where it seems like you know it'll be worth it because otherwise yeah. i do i do genuinely think you are killing it right now in the independence like how many oh. world titles do you have right now uh now i have one um oh. i thought you had two i thought you at least had two maybe i was wrong uh maybe you might be foreseeing something you know i ain't gonna <laughs> I can't give no spoilers yeah <laughs> Oh, this guy is posing with belts all the time. I mean, like he's, he's, he's rocking it out there. Um, yeah, no, I, I think it would be great to see you back in the WWE. And obviously, like, till this day, everybody loves crime time. And anytime another African-American black tag team comes up and about, whether it's whether it was the Street Profits or it was Darren Young and, and Chaitis O'Neal, they're always compared to crime time. I feel like you yeah. guys were, like, the standard that people remember now <laughs> as that tag team. Um, yeah, but before it was men on a mission. I'm glad it we, was, uh, but I think we they, were, the they were really 90s, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> you guys are still living in the modern time, and people still love crime time. And people wanted a crime time return. Return. I do remember when I was doing that short lived podcast with Shad, he talked about how you guys almost did return. There was yeah. talks of that and whatnot. Um, how did how like what did crime time mean to you? Like, how, how did that all come about? Crime time was just Shad and I having fun and 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 taking stuff from our childhood and making it new again on um yeah. on a WWE platform. You know, Shad and I both love in Living Color, um Friday, How High, 
and we yeah. took a lot of elements from from those shows and movies and um made it made it made it crime time you know for uh, money money yeah yeah you know i remember the first time hearing that shad uh shad just started busting it out saying it in one of our skits out of nowhere and i just went along with it i'm like where yeah. did you get that from that was <laughs> it was hilarious he said oh i got that from bernie mac from um <laughs> The players club you know yeah. when uh when when luke came to the club and he told and he pushed the button all the strippers had to run out he yeah. started singing money money yeah yeah and i'm like <laughs> let's go with it i love it <laughs> yeah and i just and it really like there's so many memorable crime time moments for a lot of people whether it was the stuff you guys do with dx it was one segment i remember specifically where like william regal started dancing with you guys backstage at a summer oh, yeah. that's one of my I favorite think, gifts <laughs> yeah like, it's so funny like the moment he starts like smiling and breaking into dance and i think um People would love to see you back to WWE just because you are like you know someone they grew up watching when it comes to Crime Time. Um, that being said, when Crime Time separated, did they have any plans for you after? Do you know if they had any plans for you after that might have fell through? Um, I know they had. Um, they didn't have any concrete plans for 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 us after we split because I remember one moment, one moment I was supposed to go to Raw and Shadow was supposed to go to SmackDown and then things changed and we were both on SmackDown. So that let me know that there weren't, there weren't really any, um, any plans for, for, for any of us besides yeah. splitting. And also, um, you know, I had, I had shot some ideas after the split, you know, a few, a few ideas and, um, you know, Vince Mann seemed to love them, but they never came to, uh, what kind of ideas were those? <laughs> One of them was <laughs> definitely the, um, the Muppet idea I came up, I came up with okay. similar, yeah, similar to, um, I don't know if you watch, um, that show on Netflix, what is it called again? It's a cartoon, uh, with the, uh, the hormone monster. Oh my God. I do know, but I can't think of it right now. It's a cartoon, well, right? Yeah, it's a cartoon. Yeah. Uh, I can't think of the name right now. It's a very popular cartoon. Yeah. But anyway, the hormone monster. I had a similar idea to that where the WWE universe, and I could only see the um, see my imaginary Muppet. Yeah. And um, and when I did segments, you know, the, my opponent or whoever was in the backstage segment with me, since it's a um, it's from my imagine imagination, they can't see it, but the yeah. WWE universe could could hear it and see, it, and so can I. So oh, something wow. like that. Vince loved the idea. He thought kids would love it. Um, I had a I got a Muppet that made that looked just like me. <laughs> That's um, awesome. But a lot of questions started they started getting real technical, like who's gonna control the Muppet and yeah. is he gonna come out to the ring with you? I'm like, we worry about that later. Let's just get this <laughs> the, the, get the ball roll. It's a good idea. Well, it's crazy because now if we see what's going on with Bray Wyatt and the Firefly Funhouse, yeah, and the exactly. Muppet, we're like, oh, well, they, we could have figured it out. Yeah, exactly. How to make this work? Do you still have the Muppet? Big Mouth, Big Mouth. Yes, that's the name of the show. Big Mouth. Yeah. Do you still have the Muppet though? It's in Brooklyn. It's in Brooklyn. It's at my mom's house. <laughs> oh, so she has the mini Muppet. J okay. <laughs> JDG. That's <laughs> awesome. Um, I always like to ask this question. I don't know if you remember for sure, but I just think people always find Vince McMahon fascinating and we always hear the stories. But do you remember the first time you ever got a compliment from Vince? Got that pat on the back that you guys are doing something right? Um, I think after our match with the Spirit Squad, our debut match, you know, after yeah. we uh, wrestled, he took his headphones off. He started clapping, gave us a thumbs up. And then... Um, and at the time, I didn't know that was a big deal. Yeah, uh, it wasn't until afterward, maybe like a maybe like a a, a year in, um, somebody talked about the, the the headset off and the and the and the, and the hand clap because Vince doesn't yeah. do that a lot. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's what I mean, we always hear stories like that. So I'm like, I think most most of you guys will remember when that happened, and I think it's like a big moment. So yeah. Yeah. So I got it on the first night. So I thought that was something he he always did. And then after a year or two, I was like, oh, he doesn't do well. Somebody pointed it out. I'm like, oh. Okay, he only does that with with <laughs> <every once laughs> he really, a while, yeah. on very rare occasion. So I appreciate I appreciate it the first time. Yeah, that was my first compliment from Vince. Oh man, that's awesome. Um, there has been like a series of releases right now happening throughout the pandemic and stuff. And I was just curious because obviously you went through something like that as well, and yeah. you're doing really well right now. Would you have any advice for people that are getting released? Like, what would like what what is was your take on that? Oh, take some time for yourself. You know, it's gonna take some time to adjust to um, your new reality, but there's life after WWE. Um, and, you know, it just take some time for yourself. You know, some people take it very hard. Uh, mine was kind of, um, a, it was a, it was like a slow kill because I was at home for like a year. Yeah. So I was just wrapping my mind around it. Like, when is, when is it going to come? When is it, when, when is that phone call going to come? Yeah. Um, but some people like, you know, even Braun, he got it out of nowhere. So, you know, you just need some time for yourself, uh, adjust to your new reality. And there's definitely life after WWE. 
I mean, you got a ton going on, right? So, like, do you? Th- how valuable is it now, looking back to like, yo, you should be having some things outside that you're working on and so as well, like some projects and stuff, you know? Say that one more time. How do you feel about the the concept of like making sure you have other projects going on too? Oh yeah, I always have um things going on. You know, I know, I know, we all love professional wrestling, but you know, we need to sometimes um do other things to get our mind off off of wrestling and also to stay keep your mental keep your keep keep your mental healthy you know you just can't be yeah. focused on one thing all the time <laughs> no for sure when you started like when you wanted to become a wrestler who were some of your biggest inspirations oh first and foremost i just gotta today's his birthday shout out to uh, bret hart happy birthday yeah. yeah um bret hart was definitely one of my uh inspirations i still look i still watch his matches and some of his um uh, his epic uh, feuds for, yeah. for inspiration. Uh, his storytelling is amazing, and that's became one of my biggest things now um, with in, in wrestling and putting putting together my matches is making sure I tell a uh, tell a story in the ring, which is really important. Which sometimes I find kind of feel this is you know just my opinion. I'm not saying anything against anyone, but sometimes I feel like that's a lost art. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the telling the story in the ring with the with the proper you know psychology. In my opinion, I'm just a fan. I've never wrestled. I don't know that much. I'm just saying from my mm-hmm. opinion because I feel like we see a lot of spots and working towards a spot rather than telling that story nowadays. And, and yeah. I think Brett was known for telling stories. And I'm a big Brett fan. The Canadian in me is very happy that you said that. <laughs> um, you know what? Now that, that reminds me of a story, and you can confirm if this is true or not. Um, the Shad once told me the story about when you guys first met Brett backstage and how you yeah. introduced yourself and you were really shy. And he was like, yeah, no, Mike, go up. tell him you're a wrestler. Like, go up there and say, I'm JTG from Crime Time. And then he went up there and did that for you. And then Brett was like, oh, how are you? And, like, was so much nicer and whatnot. Is that, like, a true story? It's not like that. Yeah, we went to, um, I remember we went, he, we went to, um, we went backstage. We went backstage yeah. to um, to a show. We weren't on, we weren't scheduled on the, on the show. Okay. And we went, he was like, we're just going to go. I know you want to meet Brett. Let's go say hi to Brett. Yeah. You know, talk to him for a while and blah, blah, blah. And then he was in the locker room. And I was like. I, I, yeah, there was there was a little nerve because they say never meet your heroes. I didn't yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it like I didn't want him to heal out on me. Like, fuck you doing here? Who's this guy? Who's this Mark? You know, I didn't know how he's gonna yeah. respond. You know, I don't want to ruin my childhood. But now, um, <laughs> I, I went up to him, shook his hand, we spoke for a little bit, and he gave me some great advice. Yeah, that's awesome. No, no, I I I, I totally understand. I felt the same way about uh, meeting Brett myself, but <laughs> I I happened to like befriend his children throughout the years. Oh, dope! That's so dope. like he recognized me. And uh, for me, it was like, oh, he knows who I am. That's so weird. And I was sitting there, like, nervous, standing in line at WrestleCon, like, sweating, wasn't even meant to be there. Like, and he's like, what are you standing in line for? Come to the front. I'm like, this guy's the nicest guy ever. Yeah, like, I could definitely like, co-sign that. So how old were you when you did, when you actually started pursuing wrestling and you decided that you wanted to do this full-time? I was uh, 18 years old, like, right after high school. Um the first time I got into a wrestling ring was on my 18th birthday because uh, yeah. I was finally allowed to train. Uh, <laughs> they didn't want to train me at 17, and then from um, from uh, from 18, 19, I uh, officially moved to uh, Louisville, Kentucky, OV, to to train at OVW. All right, at 19, and then I got signed when I was in tw- when I was 21. Who you? What wrestling school did he go to? If you don't mind me asking. So the first one I went to wasn't really wrestling school. I found a trainer in North Carolina. Yeah. I couldn't find a school in New York that I was fond of. So I moved to Charlotte because I had family in Charlotte in Charlotte. And I found a trainer in North Carolina. Uh, he trained me. He, he showed me. He showed. I'm not going to even say he trained me. He showed me some things <laughs> <laughs> for six months. And then I wasn't I didn't I didn't think I was getting the training that I needed. So um, I found out about OVW, and then I started going to OVW uh, on the weekends. Was that when um, good old Jim Cornette was still down there? Jim Cornette was still there, yep. How was training with Jim Cornette? Because he's got that old school philosophy, watch tapes, learn this, do that yeah, yeah. mentality. How was that? Um, I know Cornette has a lot of heat, but I actually enjoy his, um, his, uh, his psychology. I enjoy his, um, his take on the business. Yeah. And he, he, what he, what he says makes a lot of sense. You know, I don't know all, too much about his personal life. I don't want to get into that. Yeah. But from a professional point of view, what he says makes sense. You know, some you know, some people, huh? No, no, go ahead. I was going to say some, you know, some some of the talent in the in the wrestling pool today are it is killing the killing the business. You know, taking ridiculous yeah. bumps and not selling it and getting right back up. 
just going spot to spot to spot just to get a just to get a reaction. You know, it, it makes it harder for someone like me who wants to tell a, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> tell, a it does. tell a great story. <laughs> They're waiting for you to pull out a flip. You gotta, you know, and it's like, well, that's that's not what you do. And I think yeah. um, that that's a case for a lot of people. It's like uh, you, it's almost like there's a new standard of how athletic you need to be to be in the wrestling business, but it's not really like that. It's just what we see, and yeah. and also like I, I think uh, you're not the first person, but a lot of people who did train somewhat with Jim Jim Cornette personal life aside says uh, his knowledge is very valuable. So I, I completely yeah. understand where you're coming from. And he, and he has a great memory. He, he remembers stuff from the, from the seventies, sixties, yeah. remember dates. Like that's that this man needs to be protected at all costs. It's like, he's a wrestling historian, a true <laughs> wrestling historian. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. Obviously there's been a surge. I don't know. Have you been keeping up with the WWE product at all? highlights on social media, but it's very rare you're going to find me in front of a TV on Monday uh, when Raw is on. Yeah, I know for sure, but as someone that worked there... No, Especially with no audience? Yeah, no, yeah. it's hard without no... All wrestling is hard to watch with no yeah. audience. It really is. Yeah. Like I said at the beginning, once I started seeing audiences come back for like certain companies like AEW, I was like, oh, like this enhances my viewing of this product even more as well, yeah. but just just if you're keeping you know if you have your thumb on the pulse and you kind of know what's going on and stuff you i'm sure you're seeing this this the surgeons and this actually comes from uh my community of friends on clubhouse and stuff as well they wanted me to ask you this question because they wanted to see how you felt about it but um the the, the, the showcasing of african-american and black superstars right now things like kofi kingston winning the world championship bobby lashley is the current world champion we're seeing stars like bianca and sasha banks being pushed how does that make you feel and what are your thoughts on that Oh, man, I'm loving it. I love seeing it. You know, for a long time, a lot of the um, the black uh, fans in the wrestling community was, you know, very disappointed at not seeing any representation. You know, and they, and they always had a, um, I would say they they always had a, uh, what's the word I want to use? They always had a, a issue with with the with the with the WWE not having a um, a WWE champion. Yeah. Um, you know, they will always say, Oh, Mark Henry and, and The Rock and Booker T, but those weren't the faces of the company. You know, for yeah. a long time, you know, we didn't have a black um WWE champion. Um and there was always a uh a debate with The Rock. And um I could honestly see you yeah. know Rock the Rock is definitely black, but you know, he always identified with his Samoan side. And, you know, when Kofi won the championship at WrestleMania, the WWE championship, and he was the face of the company for those few months, you know, it felt great. And now we got Bobby Lashley. Um, then, you know, you have Sasha Banks and um, Bianca Belair killing it at WrestleMania, you know, the showcase of the Immortals. Um, and, and, you know, when I saw the Hurt Business, you know, that was yeah. like, wow, they, they, you know, they were doing their thing. I don't know why they broke them up. That, that, Nobody that knows. We're also trying to figure it out. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, it was a great time to be uh, to be melanated around that time. <laughs> no, I just think I, I know it's curious to like, just have that representation now, like because like for all a lot of us, even for me, like I'm Indian, right? Like I grew up in my favorite wrestlers, oh. like the Macho Man, they're Bret Hart, this and that. But I never, I'm like, there wasn't really those many Indian wrestlers that I could be like, yo, that's like <laughs> me back in the day. And yeah. and I think it's cool because we are getting that with people of color of all races. Like we've had a lot of Japanese stars coming up now. There is Jinder Mahals and stuff now. There is uh, wrestlers that you can look at. And I just, I want to pick your brain out because mostly I think that was a really big moment when Kofi won that championship. And I remember being there live and just how emotional so many people were about that moment. And the fact that it took so long to get there, it just makes you wonder. And like, to see where we're at now, it's kind of cool. Yeah. yeah, I had to. I definitely had to be there. I was sitting in the front row, and I was able to see uh, the homie uh, lift that title up above his head and That's have awesome. his kids in the ring too. If I yeah. wasn't such a badass, I would have. I would have shed some tears too. But <laughs> no, nah, I couldn't. <laughs> no, no, for sure, for sure. Yeah, I was in the crowd that night, and it was definitely, it was definitely a big moment. Um, do you have a favorite women's wrestler right now? Favorite woman wrestler? I would definitely have to say um, Bianca Belair is definitely um, doing her thing right now. No, she really she is. is, she, is she is the EST. <laughs> um, uh, another question. Is this one okay? Well, this one might be a little personal, but this is coming from the people at the Clubhouse community, and they're very curious. And like I said, you have fans all over the place. <laughs> now, and they're always bringing up JTG, and they want to know, are you single? 
<laughs> oh my god, my cigar. Uh, what's the word I want to use? Uh, <laughs> I plead the fifth. <laughs> right, there you go. That's all you had to answer. I ain't gonna do. You <laughs> wanted me to ask, so I did ask. Um, as I stroke my beard, I want to bring up your beard care line next. Um, you have sexy as hell beard care line. How'd you come up with that? And tell us a bit about that. Uh, so now, um, sexiest hair uh, beard care, um, uh, now known as um, sexiest hair, sexiest hell um, beard and body care. Um, I came up with the um, with the um, beard care because uh, I had this formula that I was using on my beard because I wanted it to grow grow fast because you know everybody has to go through that stage you know with yeah. the little yeah um, and then I I had my formula. Um, and people, a lot. I get started getting a lot of questions at the gym. Like, hey man, I, I just saw you like only like a three weeks ago. Your beard grew a lot, and it's like thicker and fuller. Like, what are you using? Um, and I, you know, I told them, and then they started. You know, same thing with the team moss. You know, a word. I was people started uh, asking. I started telling them. They started getting results, and I'm like, okay, now I need to bottle this up and sell it. But I yeah. just couldn't sell the formula. Then I started adding like these natural essential um scents to it to make it smell good. Yeah. Um, to make it, you know, make it um marketable. No, so for sure, people love that. And if it's yeah. not, you know, it's a very common thing to go buy any sort of product that you're gonna put on your face to want to smell it first. But yeah, uh, that's what you're gonna smell like. That's what the smell you're gonna give off once you put it on your face. So. Yeah. Before I was yeah. just worried about the results, you know, getting a yeah thicker, full of beard. Then I added the scent quality to it, and everybody loved it. And then I also started doing the um the skincare too. So, you know, people, you know, men, they, you know, ladies were like, okay, your beard smells good. What about your body? So now I got the matching scent. So if your your beard smell like butterscotch, your whole yeah. body gonna smell like butterscotch. You I wanna, I wanna try some like of this stuff from, out. I wanna try some of this stuff out. Okay, I'm, I got you. I'm gonna take care of you. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay, yeah. yeah. I, like, most of this body stuff, the beard stuff all together. I need something for my face. I know that for sure. I'm getting, I'm not old by no means, guys. I'm, <laughs> I'm only turning 30, so it's young, but you gotta start taking care of yourself. Exactly. You get, right. So anybody that out there that's around my age or whatnot, and you're looking for some beard care products, and trust me, guys, it's the summertime. There is no more pivotal time to start taking care of your beard than the summer, because in the heat, it will get dry. dry. It will start. Yeah. You will start itching, and the like, dandruff will start falling out, dry skin. So oh, you don't want you that. Ladies don't like dandruff care. in the beard. Yeah, <laughs> no, no girls like that either. Trust me. They're, they're so like. <laughs> Get your get you guys some of the sexy as hell beard beard care and body products. Um, I will tag below whether you're watching this on YouTube or listening to this on iTunes app podcast the uh, links to where you can get the stuff. But definitely check it out. You also dropped an audio book a while back. I remember helping promoting that for a bit too. Was that? Oh still yeah, well, I got two audio books. It's from oh, the, two um, now. Okay. <laughs> I think you meant. Uh, I think you're mentioning the fitness book. I just dropped the fitness book not too long yeah. ago. <laughs> the newbie's got the big bicep. Yeah. Yeah, the newbies got the big biceps. Yeah, that was a fitness book I released a few months ago. Um I think in December, yeah, because a lot of you know, I get I keep getting uh getting a lot of questions about my arms, yeah. how, how they're so big. So I I I um uh, I did a six week course. Yeah. Uh, but but what you was talking to before, the audio book, um, those were um those were about my time in the wrestling business in the WWE. Um, I wrote two books, two Amazon bestsellers. The first one is called Damn, Why Did I Write This Book? And the second one is called <laughs> Damn, Why Did I Write This Book Too? Yeah. And um, and they're both they're both on audio. I went into the studio and recorded it, and it became a cult classic. That's awesome. No, it really, it really has. And then, like, and this is what I mean when I say, like, you, you aren't, like, you're wrestling for sure, but you're doing so many other things on the side, and I think that's so important. I think all, anybody that's like getting into the wrestling business knows not to put all their eggs in one basket. Like you got things going on, yeah. and I love how you try something or you're looking for something, and then you find something. And you're like, "Well, I'm gonna sell this." <laughs> 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 that's a true mind of a hustler, right there. <laughs> so, like, I actually really do admire that a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and yeah. last year, I guess another thing that's coming around the corner, and I was just creeping your Instagram, doing some research before this interview. I was like, "Oh." We're getting crime time NFTs. How did where did that come from? So I, you know, I'm I'm big in the crypto, big in the crypto world. You know, I've oh, been. Like, you just talk to Danielle Monet, aka okay, Summer Ray. She's in the crypto world now too. You guys need to connect. Oh really? Yeah, I've been I've been dabbling with crypto since 2017. You know, oh, I've been yeah, through okay. the crash. I've been through the big crash. Um, made a lot of uh some healthy investments. Made some bad investments, but um definitely made some good investments. But when I found out about NFTs, I started doing a lot of homework and research on it. And um, I'm like, oh, okay, great. And then I know I, I just combined it all my passions. You know, I love crypto. 
Um, I love what me and Shad has has done uh, with Crime Time. And I know Shad, you know, he I took a lot of elements that he loved. You know, he was a big fan of anime, um, Rick and Morty. Uh, I mean, I have the comic Dragon book that him and uh, I forget his real name, but I have the comic book that him and uh, Muhammad Hassan, I forget his real name. Yeah, they, 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 they comics and anime. So yeah, I, yeah, I have them. They're really cool. Yeah. He was really yes. into that stuff. <laughs> yeah. So I made um, I made some um, some art, some NFT art, you know, that Shad will really love. You know, he'll be proud of. And some of my favorites, and you know, I have ten NFTs coming out. Um, and I don't know if anybody doesn't anybody big on NFTs or know what NFTs are. Those are pretty much like digital digital art that um, that gives the owner uh, the digital rights to the to the image, and they could sell mm -hmm. it, trade it, um, and do whatever they want with it afterwards. Print it. Like you own it. If someone wants to use yeah, it for their own much property, own you can sell it to them to own. Like it's pretty much your property at that point. Exactly. You own yeah. that property and that and with that intellectual property, you can do whatever you want with it. And, and it's like, you can yeah, yeah. if you want to sell t-shirts with that image on it, you can because you now bought that property. Yeah. And it's a limit, it's limited edition. There's only gonna be a few few of each um few of each uh design. Um one design only has uh one limited to one, one out of one. Um, the people, the, the world, the wrestling world is gonna love that one. Um, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna do the drop soon, but uh, yeah. it should be in about a, two weeks or so. In two weeks, okay. I'm gonna make sure I drop this interview before that so people know. Um, okay. but yeah, no, that's super cool, man. I saw that. I'm like, this guy, I'm like, he really is dabbling in everything. We got the NFTs here now, too. <laughs> we got beard care, we got books, we got NFTs. <laughs> don't forget the, the T-Moss. We got the T-Moss. We got the testosterone <laughs> booster. Testosterone booster T-Moss, yep. Yeah, yeah. And he's also a professional wrestler, guys. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Where can people see you wrestle mainly if they're in the independence? Like what area? So I know you're in Texas because the, the people I know from Texas love you in Texas. But where else oh, are you thank wrestling? You. I wrestle everywhere, man. Um, um, Pretty big in Florida, too. Uh, <laughs> It's a good place uh, to be yeah, big. We got some shows, uh, APW uh, coming up. Yeah, uh, Atomic, uh, Atomic, uh, Atomic Pro Wrestling. Also, VXS. You know, they gave me a, a good start. You know, when uh, um, during the pandemic, um, I was able to wrestle for them. That was great. Uh, where else? VXS. That's in uh, that's in Philly, New Jersey. Um, and right now, I'm just going everywhere. Oh, fair enough. Is there anybody that you haven't worked yet or you've worked on the independence that you also think is someone that people should know about? What's that stuff? Um, is there just, someone you've worked with that you think wrestled, that people um, should know about? <laughs> I just wrestled Travis Huckabee yeah. uh, down at uh, Bleatsburg, Bleatsburg Creek uh, Pro Wrestling. I don't know if I'm saying the name right. Um, but yeah, he was, uh, um, he was a beast in the ring. He's a, um, he's a uh, tech, uh, mat technician. And um I would learn. I learned so much in that match. I got to give him give him his props. So you know, we had a great match, and I learned so much from him. That's crazy because it's like I know a lot of people are like, well, everybody's getting signed everywhere, but I don't think they understand how important the independents are and how much talent is. You know, the more people that get signed other places, the more talent is coming through there. And I'm like, there's gonna be some hidden gems on that independence scene right now <laughs> that people don't know about. That in like two three years, they're gonna get signed somewhere, and everyone's gonna become a fan of. But like, I'm always like. Keep your ear to the independence because that's where the talent comes from, you know. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And I guess lastly, uh, I, you know, I, I wanted to interview you a long time ago. A lot of times we met in New York at the WrestleCon over there. I remember we did the whole shout out for the page and everything, and we've talked throughout the years here and there. And I know when I was uh, briefly doing NFG Radio with Shad, you know, I asked, I'm like, Shad, what do you want to name me? He's like, no fucks given. And I'm like, okay, I don't think I can put that out there, but we can do NFG radio. Um, and that was right when the pandemic started because like me and him got a little bit closer and continued to talk afterwards. And he was working on so many different things, whether it was a TV show, the comic books, this and yeah. that. And he always wanted to keep me on the loop. So, you know, I, I'd be like, you know, uh, help him out with promoting shit and whatnot. And we just like, we talk all the time. And then I had him on one of these, a casual conversation. This is something that started when the pandemic started because I got stuck in Vancouver and um, he was on one of the first episodes. And then he was like, you know what, man? Fuck. He's like, we should fucking do this every week. He's like, I'm stuck at home too. Let's do this every week. And I'm like, okay, fuck. Let's do this every week. You know? And um, as we started doing it, I know uh, you made a, phone call appearance one time where uh 
he started messing with you about the earth and whatnot. And, uh, oh yeah, the flat, uh, flat earth. Uh, yeah. I, I miss those so much. That's one of the, like people, like some of the silliest things I miss Shad for. That's one of them. Uh, flat earth. I was in the middle of the show and he's making fun of you with this whole flat <laughs> earth theory. Um, <laughs> And like he was, he had so many. He was hyped for this about doing this every week. And I remember he's like, "No, we're gonna get Jason on here. We're gonna get Chris Masters on here. The four of us. We're gonna shoot the mm-hmm. shit, um, all that stuff." And I, the reason I didn't want to ask you earlier is like, if I got you on in the past, I don't know, like year, I feel like this would end up being, and rightfully so, would have been probably like a two-hour Shad Gaspar tribute show because we would have probably just sat and talked about him for two hours. I know yeah. to you, you guys were like brothers. Like anytime he talked about you you were his brother and um yeah you know me and him just started getting close and getting really close and became friends and whatnot and honestly i what we talked about on the air was cool but it was the hours we talked off the air after we recorded the show and all the advice he'd give me and the stuff he'd share with me and the stories he'd tell me the, the man of a million stories if you go back yeah, and listen to those episodes, guys just story in the, the stories about working for a pimp meeting mike tyson being his bodyguard <laughs> being backstage at wcw being a part of some fight club oh i started a comic book i'm like just yeah. so many stories um, but that being said, with my long intro to this question, um, I wanted to wrap things up with asking you about probably your favorite Shad Gaspard story that you you are willing to share that maybe just defines his character and who he was. Oh, man, there's so many stories and it's like they're all rushing. I don't even know which one to pick from. <laughs> um, I could just tell you, um, like you said, me, me and him were like brothers. And when I first moved to uh, Kentucky, you know, he was there maybe um, a little over a year and this man literally he didn't he didn't he didn't know me not even for a year this man helped me get my first apartment um he helped me you know he gave me his id so i could go to the club every weekend (laughs) because i wasn't 21 yet yeah um and i remember when i lost his id and like a little and just like a big brother he went to the club where where i lost it at and he raised hell until he got it back (laughs) (laughs) And then, and like a big brother, he said, if you lose this again, I'm going to beat your ass. And he gave, yeah. he gave me the ID back. He gave it back to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And um, then, um, yeah, there's so many stories. Um, I can't even think, I, like, it's hard for me to come up with, with on the spot. Yeah. But, yeah. But that, that was one of them. Yeah, no, it just, it's just, you know, he was gone way too soon, you know, and he, he left as a hero. And I, I think everyone... I mean, I'm wearing the shirt right now. I'm like, there's a better time to wear the shirt. It's right yeah. now. But rest in peace, Chad. And uh, he's just a great dude. He talks so highly about you all the time, though. All the time. I remember one of the times he was saying you guys are about to go get beers right when we're ending off the show. He said, we want to go walk the beach and have some beers. Yeah. Like that. That's <laughs> the fit, man, right there. Is there anything else you want to plug before we wrap this up? Um, No. If, you, if anybody wants to follow me on social media, <laughs> um, yeah. you know, I'm on Instagram at JTG121084. Twitter, JTG1284. If you're looking to get some um get a sexy as hell beard or if you want some yeah your body to smell good for the ladies you know go to sahbeardbeard.com <laughs> um also if you're into bodybuilding you're trying to you know your testosterone's a little low you're feeling a little tired you know you, you feel a little weak in the gym get you some testosterone boost in uh cmos at t-moss.com and uh and if you're a big crime time fan Look out for them. Uh, follow me on Instagram and look out for those uh, NFT drops, those drop dates. Thank you very much, JTG. This was a pleasure. It was a great conversation. Guys, look out for all those things. I'll put links to all of them down here below, um, whether you're watching on YouTube or if you're subscribed to the TWC show stream on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Thank you for tuning in. I really appreciate you doing this. And no problem. Thank you for having me. We'll do this again it. soon. I don't know. We'll, 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 see what, we'll see what happens. I feel like there's a lot of... Everyone, once again, everywhere I go... Everyone's like, yo, I went to a house show. I went to a live show, a local show. JTG's out there, man. This guy's jacked, and he's fucking killing it. So, Thank you, man. I appreciate that. No, of course. Thank you. And make sure you guys check out NWA to see G- JTG on there as well as when they're, as they come back regularly soon. Um, and keep doing the thing, everybody. See you all later. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Dig it. Uh-huh. Yeah. Sweet. It's time to say goodnight. We sincerely appreciate your patronage and hope we've succeeded in bringing you an enjoyable evening of entertainment. Please drive home carefully and come back again soon. Good night.